Trash to Cash Podcast, episode 49. Dave, the NC Picker here. With us today is Carrie, American Arbitrage, and special guest, Eric and Profit. Steve, right? Steve? Yeah, yeah we What's met. your first name? We met, that, the, man. we met through the eBay messages recently, so. Yeah, I, you know. yeah, recently. Well, and yeah, so recently, Steve sent me a very aggressive message, and I publicized <laughs> it all over the internet. <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah it was pretty funny i mean so talk about le- well okay before we go into that i actually had to start with this it's important it's contractual my mom is looking to make three thousand ish a month on a side hustle yeah. steve do you have any ideas she's 66 well i know this mom who's six <laughs> has three to five thousand a month selling for oh really dollars a month profit for a low payment of 67 dollars <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome dude my oh, mom's okay, 80 cool. my mom's 80 she makes like 50 dollars a month on amazon um it's yeah. not quite as good of a hook as yours all right guys quick interruption this is our first week of having our patreon up and running and we have six vip donors who were super awesome so i just wanted to thank them then we'll get back into this awesome episode where we make rake and profit feel super uncomfortable thank you biscuit butt parker county picker logan uh, Raise Hell Resell, uh, Eastward Collectibles, Side Hustle Preacher, and Tanya Arnold. We definitely appreciate it. If you guys want to become a part of the Patreon, make sure you click the link below. We're putting a lot of funny things in there, so you'll at least get a laugh if you do. Now back to the show. <laughs> does she really well, sell, though? Does, like, does your mom actually sell or no? Uh, no, she does. Yeah, she sells on Amazon, but she's kind of given up over the last couple of years, honestly. But she has yeah. sold on Amazon for like a decade. Oh, it sounds like she's pretty lazy, Carrie. I mean, well, she's eighty. <laughs> Give her a break. She's worked so? her whole life. Let her chill. <laughs> well, Just right chill now, out. my mom's my mom's running a special on consultation, so we'll hook you mm. up fifty percent off, forty seven bucks. We'll jump on a call, help you. Are those good. like? Good. Are you wearing blue blocker shades, uh, Steve? Well, a couple of people warned me. I wanted to blind myself from the bullshit you guys are going to spew off. Oh, okay. <laughs> I feel. <laughs> I feel like I feel like I'm like talking with some sort of like a uh, club DJ or something like you're <laughs> like Diplo light or something. That's the Connecticut way, bro. He's like, you got I a know. pager right now, don't you? I've, I've never been to Connecticut, <laughs> but that's exactly what I imagine. What do you guys call your shopping carts? We call them carriages over here. Well, carriage? I grew up in Connecticut. Carriages. OK, good. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, he's like, I call them carriage. cart. Yeah. You guys yeah. are wild. Like tag the sales. Florida way is cart. Tag sales, yep, tag sales. My mom still calls them tag sale. Uh, but again, she needs some help with it. Hey, I'll say this, okay? As, um, okay, so first of all, let's start off, because you've said this to me, so I can say it to you. Some people find your mom shorts annoying. <laughs> oh, I'm sure, like, one, the truth is, like, you have to play, like, a balance. If you're trying to, like, build a big, like, following, or you want to, like, be able to help or reach a bunch of people, you have to balance it out. Like I try to do like really like 80 to 90% value, not freaking viral type videos that really are yeah. just kind of annoying, but it's crazy. Like when I post those videos, like they get a million views, 3 million views, yeah. 5 million views. So it's like, it's well, a- and, and I laugh at him, but my mom was over my house. Carrie was here <laughs> yeah. and I show her, I'm like, mom, check this out. And it was your mom like tripping and falling and yeah. you laughing at her and she's carrying yeah. all these books, yeah. right? You weren't helping and, at all. And she, you're like, you're like, mom's mom, my mom's making 3000 months selling on Amazon. My mom's like, Hey, maybe I should try that. And she like wanted to watch more of it. And I'm like, ah, oh, okay. No wonder he does this crap. <laughs> <laughs> because like, I'll put my heart and soul into a video. Like I'll share my experience and like put on this, all this great information and like, you get like 10 likes. And then like, I shoot this little clip with my mom, like prancing out of the thrift store. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, I'm, I'm worth it. <laughs> we, we have done so many deep dives on, on your mom's um, shorts over the last year or so. First off, um, I think you talked to Dave about this, how you filmed a lot of that footage on one day because she has the same sweat, sweater on, on like 90% of them and you're just reusing the footage. It's brilliant. And we got so excited. We both got so excited. We DM'd each other when she turned 68 and you started saying she was, was a big deal. Now. It was a big deal. We were, we're like, so his excited. Mom's 68, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like it. it's going to trash now it's like oh man mom we got to get up and uh refilm <laughs> <some more. laughs> you're we 68 some- mom we gotta <laughs> mom you've gained a couple pounds we're gonna have to refilm oh, whoa, everything <laughs> whoa too far dave come on 
No, was, oh, wow, okay. It's fun. No, okay, so, but listen, if you're wondering where most of your, view, of your views are coming from, it's me and Carrie deep diving, <laughs> analyzing the clothing, the, you know, how many books can you she You gotta lift? understand. How, how many you're books like, can she lift? You're like the biggest celebrity <laughs> me and Dave have ever talked to, because we fo- I followed you since, uh, gosh, when did you start? Like 2002 or something on YouTube? It feels You've been like on there a while. It feels like that, yeah. I, I started when... Funny or not, I always tell people, it's like, there's no excuse not to be able to make money nowadays. When I started, like, and I'm an idiot, like it takes me a long time to figure things out. When I started, the biggest YouTube channel in the reseller space was like 800 subscribers. Like Google wow. Hangouts back then was like, it was such a pain in the butt to go live. Like there was like 15 YouTube channels, like in general. So it's like, it's crazy, man, how much times have changed. Yeah. No, I mean, Carrie's right. I was watching your toy videos back in the day with your, uh, with your Vinny, buddy. Vinny, Vinny the toy Vinny. guy. Yes, he yeah. even knows the names. He even, Dude, even knows I mean, the cast of characters. I have watched <laughs> I have watched so many hours of Rake and Profit videos that I should get some money at this point because you should. I really have invested a lot. You, you didn't get the money for the surgery we were talking about before the call? <laughs> oh, we were going to keep that private. No, I'm, I, I was, yeah, I just build that on my credit. Hopefully Okay, it'll work. good, good. <laughs> so, okay, but but let's talk about it because you've been doing videos, so what is it, 10 years, 6 years, 9 years? Wait, I'm looking at your uh, videos. Sort by oldest, can I do that? I'm like 13, I think, 12, 13, 14. 9 years 14. ago, how to flip bicycles for cash. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah okay, so, that's so, a, so it's a bona fide hustler video right there. Well, that's who I learned from. I mean, I was working at the Cracker Barrel at the time and, uh, you know, working a nine to five. You like to Cracker Barrel. I worked at the Cracker Barrel. Okay. How many stars did you get up to? I I, I was like just zero stars, like the trainee first year thing. (laughs) Yeah. How many did you have? Uh, I think I worked my way up to two. So I was pretty a hot shot around there. But yeah, I was working at the Cracker Barrel and I really, I just hated it. I hated clocking in, clocking out. I felt trapped. Um, you know, it was fun to work there for a couple of reasons. The food was good. The girls were pretty, but you know, <laughs> they're, they're 80, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're Commonwealth. Uh, <laughs> they know what I'm into. No, um, <laughs> but, uh, I was just, I was so desperate to find a way to like make money on my own. I mean, I've always been a hustler when I was 21, I got arrested. I was selling weed, got raided, locked up, went to jail, was on probation for three years. So, like my life was like crap so i was going to school at the time working at the cracker barrel and i was so desperate i was looking on youtube for ways to make money and i stumbled upon this big jacked asian dude named the bonafide hustler i was like this guy looks smart he looks like he knows what he's doing and he was flipping bikes and at the time again there was like no way to connect with people so the only way i was able to talk to him is i just started essentially stalking him on facebook and sending him private messages and sending him pictures of bicycles and that summer, I ended up flipping like somewhere between like 15 to 20 grand worth of bikes. I mean, I wow. was obsessed. I would sit on Craigslist. There was no Facebook marketplace back then. I would sit on Craigslist all day and just refresh the newly listed. And I was looking for road bikes, the Cannondales, the vintage Raleigh's, the Trex, the special lot, all those. And uh, Huffy. Yeah. Were you, oh, yeah. Tuffy on your Huffy. Were you reselling them right on Craigslist? Yes. Yeah, so literally, okay. I would buy them on Craigslist and flip them back. I did a few on eBay, but... I just yeah. hate having shipping, a shipping yeah. and getting yeah. damaged. Yeah. It, it, it just, so that was the you, start of the whole thing. When you reflipped them on Craigslist, was it all about taking a better picture? Was that the key? Or um, how did you get more money doing it that way? Yeah. He posted them in the casual encounters, actually. <laughs> That's <laughs> the key. That's <laughs> the key. <laughs> um, but a lot of them were uh, just underpriced. So yeah. um, it was a combination of it. A, being underpriced, B, cleaning it up, like maybe just putting on some new tires, um, you know, just just making sure the gears turn and just mm-hmm. clean it up a little bit. So I learned some basics on how to just clean them up. And yeah, I mean, taking good pictures and pricing them right and being patient. You know how it is. Half the battle is just being patient and, and waiting for that buyer to come along. Yeah. Well, and you got to be fast. You got to get it before anyone else snaps it up too. On the, you want to you find listed. those listings, like for example, like a DVD listing that's violently undervalued. Like the seller has no <laughs> idea what it's worth. And you yep. want to go and grab that DVD and then you want to yep. flip it. Send an get, aggressive it's message ar- it's and then flip it. <laughs> it's arbitrage. Okay, no, well, okay, really let's, what it let's is. go into that because yeah. basically Carrie's talking about uh, how Steve sells on Amazon. Okay, so before the show started, Steve started asking me about Amazon. I said, let's not talk about that till the show starts yeah, because right. to be honest, I got banned seven years ago <laughs> from selling on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> And Kerry, I had told me he's banned. Now he's waffling on it. Maybe he's just trying to be no, cool. I never <laughs> logged back into my account, and so I don't know what the password is. I'm not banned though. 
you can't get into his account. I'm, I'm no so, joke. And, and I'll tell you what, I got banned with no explanation. With no, they never told me why. They never did anything. And I, I had made a lot of money that year. I'd been slowly building it, like ten thousand, twenty thousand. That was like a fifty or sixty thousand dollar year, banned. And they didn't tell me why. I must have been doing something in a gated section or something. I had no idea what I was doing. I was just, I wasn't watching Rake and Profit at the time, so I didn't know what I was doing. Okay, right. Cool. Um, and so I got banned, and, and I, I actually figured out they banned everything. They banned my buying account, my selling account, my Audible account. I lost all my audiobooks. I had money in there that they took. It was like a few thousand dollars I never got back. I had inventory and FBA that I never got back. And I emailed them, and like a ton of times. And the way they're, <clears throat> it was really annoying because I tried to get a hold of them for six months. And what they, and what I ended up finding out is when you email Amazon seller support, Every time you respond and say, hey, did you get my message? It pushes you back down to the bottom of their support ticket group, right? So, you you know, every time, like me and Impatient Dave emails them daily, bottom, 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 bottom. And I just never got a response from them. I finally gave up. And yeah, so that's my Amazon story. What are you selling on there? I'm curious. <sighs> Video games, toys. Um, that's pretty much it. Video games and toys I'd get at the Goodwill or Target. It honestly sounds like, and this is one of my biggest fears as well, but it happens. It sounds like almost like a counterfeit claim or something because in the terms of service, it's really scary. If you sell on Amazon and even if you aren't selling fake items, if you get a counterfeit claim and you don't prove through an invoice to prove chain of custody, hmm. uh, you will get banned. And they have in their terms of service that they can literally just dispose of all your inventory. Now, let me yeah. explain what disposing of your inventory means on Amazon. Uh, taking your listings down and then reselling it. <laughs> so um, it sounds like that. And that's one of the the, the risks of um, selling on Amazon from thrift stores, garage sales, auctions, anywhere that you don't have a legitimate itemized invoice. Um, yeah. You know, I tell people all the time, my business on Amazon is, it is built on a volcano because at scale, it's like Russian roulette. Eventually you're probably going to get um, taken out. But the question is like, how long will it take? How far? Will your account allow you to get pushed forward? Because I mean, I have friends of mine who are doing sixty to eighty k a month, and they have ten to twelve counterfeit claims, three or four. Um, uh, excuse me, ten to twelve IP claims, three to four counterfeit claims, and I actually have a friend who his account's been in yellow, like risk of being deactivated for five years. Actually, a YouTuber that I know. I won't. I won't wow. say names, but uh, it's got to be daily refinement. <laughs> yeah, it's got to be daily refinement. That dude's about to get, gotta get some banned on some more stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's, cra it's you know back to your your point about it it's amazon's scary i mean yeah the ability to scale is like way crazier than than ebay but it's like it doesn't take much you really have to know what you're doing on amazon well in that year i made more on amazon than ebay i think i had made 40 on, e on ebay and 50 or 60 on amazon and i was like loving it and i was like about to go all in on amazon and then that happened i'm like oh i guess i'm out and what happened was like a year and a half ago, I went and I made like a brand new account and I actually got back in and then like I sold one thing and then they charged me like a $50 monthly fee or something yeah. and it put me in the negative. I'm like, screw Amazon. <laughs> I just didn't sell anything else on there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They have a, uh, in order to sell on Amazon and get the buy box and actually be competitive amongst other offers, you have to become yeah. a pro seller, which is thirty nine ninety nine a month. Yeah, and, that was uh, it, I think. It, it, I think it, I signed up by accident, but here was the thing. I signed up in multiple countries by accident. So I had like a $50 yeah. bill from uh, Australia, yeah. Amazon, Japan. I really did. And so like I had all these weird accounts because I just don't read things. I just say yes to everything. And so I had like that 40 bucks, but for like multiple countries that I was had accidentally signed up to well, sell in. You know, you know to, uh, to be able to back you up a little bit, it's not your fault. And I talk about this all the time in my videos. Like you have to be really careful when you're – filling things out with Amazon because they actually trick you into that account. Yeah. Like they'll have a, a sales page that's like freaking 20 scrolls down and it's like, it makes it seem like you could only sign up with the $40 a month plan, but if you scroll all the way down to the bottom and a little tiny fine print, it's like opt out of this and sign up for free. And it's like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Carrie, so what you, happened with your Amazon selling? Did you ever sell a lot? Yeah, I did. I used to sell more on Amazon than I did on eBay. I just honestly didn't enjoy it as much as eBay. Um, it's, I feel like Amazon's a way to make more money faster and grow, especially with FBA and everything. I just, I don't know. I liked picking random stuff, you know, antiques, collectibles, and they don't tend to do as well 
on Amazon. So I just yeah, you want barcoded items? Yeah, yeah, barcoded items. It just I didn't enjoy it as much as I enjoyed eBay. But I you always tell people enjoy? it's better than eBay if you want to make big money. I feel like Mama Profits sure. enjoys it. She does. She does. <laughs> She'll scan books for hours at the thrift store, guys. Hours. So what would be what would be your fallback plan, Steve, if Amazon disappeared tomorrow? I mean, would you just, I mean, have you ever thought about what not? I mean, do you still sell on eBay at all? Bonanza is huge, I know. <laughs> um, I don't know if you sell on Bonanza at all, but I mean, a lot of people yeah. are. I, 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 I don't know how big Bonanza is. I know people drop ship on there, but uh, honestly, I, I don't know entirely what I would do just because I've gotten so spoiled with Amazon FBA. eBay, I'm really not selling too much on eBay right now just because I'm, I'm just so busy with all the different things I'm doing with, uh, you know, um, Amazon and social media and whatnot. But I'd probably, I'd probably fall back and, you know, recording my mom so we can get a million. <laughs> you gotta do what you gotta do. Mom, wake up. It's time to record. I'm just You're wondering, is, is, she, is she getting a cut of all the profits? Because I know. <laughs> I'm sleeping, Steven. Leave me alone. Make me a sandwich, mom. <laughs> Sorry, I've imagined the whole house life. <laughs> totally. <laughs> do you live with Mama Profits or no? She's actually back. Th- mom. No, I'm just playing. Yes. Oh, that'd be so cool. <laughs> I would kick you off the show for Mama Profits. It comes out, it comes out, who the hell are these losers? <laughs> yeah, that's She's like that's really fair. like a, a really like nasty lady. <laughs> I see Picker, the wannabe Ty Lopez. He's in the garage. Yeah, oh, yeah that's right. Yeah. Oh, oh. I, I'm Googling Ty The wannabe Ty Lopez, Grant Cardone on. right there, NC Picker. <laughs> Ty Lopez. Oh, yeah, he's kind of he's kind of a cool guy. He's always garage. like in his garage. Yeah, he's got cars. Oh, I've seen this guy. He points at his big fancy car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, he's, gotcha. He's like, like the, the rock star <laughs> flipper. Yeah, he's like the rock star flipper, but he makes money. Um, he's, a, uh, he's actually a really smart guy. But he's a smart guy, but like his like the internet marketing and like it's everything he does. Like I don't think there's anything wrong with making money, coaching, like even selling programs. But like ninety five percent of your content should just be free, pure value. And like his stuff is just so scammy and spammy lately. It's just like you can't watch it. Well, let's talk about that. That's a good topic. So <clears throat> have you sold a course? Oh, yeah, I think you have right things over the years. Yeah, ebooks, courses. And coaching. do you do you think that's worth doing? Like, is it profitable? Is it? I've made a lot of money over the years. I mean, what I've made the most money off of through like my actual YouTube channel is affiliate marketing. Yeah, the thing obviously. is with it, it's, you know, to be perfectly honest, it, I wish I would have done things differently. Um, I obviously, when I started, I didn't fully understand like how to market appropriately. And I feel like sometimes I was maybe too pitchy, too salesy. And I think it really hurt my brand over the years. I think it really turned off a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And, you know, over the years, I've learned how to be able to add value and, and connect with people who do want help. Because like in the past, I would just put it out in people's face too much. And like, that's just the biggest mistake. You don't, people don't want to be sold to people, no. people, people want to be able to raise their hand and come to you. There's an appropriate place. You shouldn't be pitching and selling things on YouTube. Um, so I've made a lot of mistakes over the years. Um, yeah. Hey, speaking of that, the Trash to Cash course is now available. It it's comes with a timeshare. It does. It does. Now, listen, it's going to be it's going to be four really difficult payments of yes. two thousand dollars. They're not going to be easy to come up with. But don't worry. We promise you little to no value. It's mm-hmm. going to help us mm-hmm. a great deal, though. We have yes. a lot of goals in our lives and it's going to help us. Imagine it, us with more money. Similar, but just us. with more money. Imagine how we'd waste it. <laughs> cash only, right? No credit. Cash only, yeah. yeah cash, cash only. only. Well, no, cash I think, only. listen, I so I'm like late to the game on the reselling niche on YouTube. I've had a YouTube channel since 2009. I started making Minecraft content in 2011. Always loved YouTube. Always wanted to get into the content. And this whole time, I'm side hustling, going to Goodwill, going to Target Clearance. I'm, I'm reselling. I'm doing the same, going to garage sales. And I just didn't even think to ever look on YouTube to see if that kind of content existed. Yeah. And then like 2020, when we're all locked in at home, my friend told me, he's like, hey, you know, I know you like this stuff. Have you ever watched any of the eBay content? And the first couple people I found was actually yourself, Steve, mm-hmm. and uh, Cincinnati Picker and uh, who else? I can't remember. I've talked about it before. Um, definitely not Carrie, that's for sure. No, no. But... <clears throat> But anyway, so I was watching all this content and now I've gotten more into the space and I'll be honest, I do think some people think you marketed too much in the past, Steve. I've heard things like that. 100% and again, if I had the knowledge that I had now, it would be completely different. But it's like, I didn't, 
I tried my best to like you. Let me put it this way. It's like, what would you do if you were dead broke and you're obviously making tons of content, you're enjoying it. People are asking you like, I want to learn more about clothes. Like I want to learn about this. And every single comment back in 2015, 2016 is like, what brand should you buy? What should you do this and that? So I figured I was watching some people and I was like, wow, like, 95% margins, you can create an ebook, you can help people and make money. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think my issue and what caused a lot of harm for my brand is you don't want to be pushing it in every single video. Like I remember I used to have videos all the time with the first five seconds would be like, buy my ebook. And it's just like, <laughs> yeah. Just like yeah, wrong way to do it. If people yeah. really like you and trust you and want your help, they'll DM you, they'll ask you for help. And I think there's certain topics now where it's almost like super scammy now to try to sell things like on basic information. Like there's people out there selling yeah. courses on how to get ungated in Amazon and like different things that are just like you can learn on your own. I think there's a balance though. Like if there's something that you can offer that can save a lot of people time and maybe it's not everybody is, you know, dead broke. There's actually busy professionals out there who are working jobs, making six figures. You just want to save time and learn what to buy, what to sell or learn how to do some type of method. But yeah, no doubt. If I could go back in time, I, I mean, my audience would probably be like five times bigger. So you live and you learn, you make mistakes and you know, you would make yeah. your calls and grow. As somebody time. who's watched you, I'd say since 2012, probably when, or 13, whenever you started, because I was big into it back then, there wasn't many people to follow. Um, yeah. I think once you started getting more into that, I stopped, I, I don't think it was like a coherent choice or like something I was thinking about. I just kind of went on to other types of content, but I did come back to some of your really good videos and I will give you credit for this, like the Vinny videos, the toy videos. You had some interview videos, I think you did at a eBay open or something years ago where you would sit on the, on the chairs next to people. So you still, even, even though that might've been something you wish you hadn't done, you still put out, I mean, to your credit, some very good videos that I, I got knowledge out of for sure. And I, I have no regrets of 95% of, of the programs that I put out. Um, I just regret how I went about marketing it and whatnot, because, you know, till this day, I still get tons of messages. I mean, people could say what they want about me, but you can't really find anybody who's going to actually talk trash about anything that I've created because I put my heart and soul into things. I don't create something if I haven't gone through it, if I don't get results from it. Um, oh, I'll talk trash about your mom content. <laughs> but that is free. But that is free. But I'd that like is free. That is free. Would like to a really good point. I'd be curious to hear what your guys' thoughts are. You know, I'll tell you when I first started making YouTube videos back in what? When, when was the oldest video? 2013. You said you saw. Uh, yeah, nine years ago. So 13. Let me ask you, how many of the people who are making videos, and I'm, I'm sure not everybody listening or watching knows, but I can tell you right now, from 2013 to 2015. About 98% of the people who were making videos back then were gone. Where did they all go? Why are yeah. so many content creators coming and going? And you want to know what the truth is? I, I believe, I think it's a combination. One, I don't think people can put up with the hate um, because people are just savage on the yeah. internet. I mean, that's, yeah. It doesn't matter what niche you're in. Like people are going to, people have said the craziest thing. Speaking of my mom, you would not even believe. <laughs> well, <laughs> I actually love your mom. So it's a yeah, whole different thing. Fans, <laughs> crying with our kittens like not doesn't want to leave the house anymore yeah. but uh, you know the thing is i wish more content creators did actually find a way to earn money by by creating content because a lot of them stop making content because they're like i gotta pay my bills inflation yeah, it's room. a lot of time yeah but it's a lot of time the right way and people don't understand like how much time you guys spend like even this podcast like who knows how many systems and processes and money and time you have to put into it but the viewers Viewers don't care. They care, but like viewers just want the content. They want the value. They don't care yeah. how much time you spend doing it. So it's like, it's a tough balance. You know, it's definitely an area that I'm passionate about and I'm still trying to learn like what's the right and wrong way to go about things, you know? So I'm always open yeah. to feedback. Yeah, it is. So I think, so in your defense, when I started this thing and I was getting some momentum like a year and a half in, a buddy at work, because I have a day job. I'm, I'm a busy professional, as you were calling them. I have a day job. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, very professional, very professional. I haven't worn a collared shirt in like two years. But anyways, I'm a business professional who's very busy and I have a coworker and my coworker is also really into YouTube and content creation and social media. He's built his Instagram to like 100,000 followers. Like, you know, he's into it. And when he saw my space, he's like, Dave, you really need to make a course. And I was like, eh, no, no, no. <laughs> and he's like, you got to. So people know like what to sell on eBay. I can help you record. I was like, no, it's like, 
it's like icky in our space now for some reason. I don't know why, but people get up, up in arms for some reason. But it's so common in other spaces that if you're not in this space, you do think, oh, well, why it doesn't even make a course? But maybe it's because, like you said, so much of it is now freely available. Yeah, and it's it, it's so true, though. Like, it's like courses now. It's like it is icky. It's it's gross. It's like people don't respect it. And if I'm going to be 100% transparent, most people don't even get like – I forget who said it. it was like Tony Robbins. He sold millions and millions of books. I guess they did some like large case study and don't quote me on the stats, but it was something ridiculous. Like 90% plus of people who bought his book never even got through the first page. So it's like courses don't even really get people results. I mean, because most people just don't have the patience or discipline to even go through it and apply it. So it's yeah. like, I don't know. I feel like what's really valuable are events or like some type of like mentorship or coaching where you're able to really work with people one-on-one -on -one or in a group. Um, yeah, that's no, cool. I see that. And I know Daily Refinement does that, right? He has his podcast and his Patreon, yeah. and he does coaching. And you said you have coaching tonight later too, right? Yes, but I'm actually getting coached. I'm not coaching. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> and it's for your OnlyFans. Yeah. Yes. It's How's for that my going, by the way? <laughs> that's what the poetry has to do with before the – we won't talk about it, but yes. <laughs> no, I mean, I think – okay, well – We'll talk about events. First, I want to talk about kind of your bowel movements, your schedule. Are you pooping once a day, twice a day? It's actually required uh, as a guest. Uh, after yes. the coffee. After the coffee. After the coffee. You yeah. know, it's weird. I went to a yard sale yesterday, Steve, and this lady was telling me that her boyfriend was in the hospital. And he was in the hospital because he couldn't he couldn't make a movement, as it were. He couldn't, well, you're not going to say poop now after all this time? He couldn't do a duty. Poop. He couldn't do a duty. And uh, <laughs> it was interesting because she said he was in the Marines. And in the Marines, they give you something that makes you constipated, like something in your food. I guess they don't want you to go to the bathroom as often. I don't know if this is true. This could be a conspiracy theory. But this, my brother will love that I'm sharing this. My brother was in the Marines, and he poops like once a week. What? And so I, I think this is a real thing. It's not natural or sanitary. No. Well, I mean, I don't know if it's unsanitary. It's not healthy. <laughs> not healthy, that's for sure. He's been taking magnesium, and he says it, it blows him out every time he takes it. So... If you want to poop, Steve. <laughs> How did we get to this part of the conversation? Yeah, we I just had to. Do you, it's I don't required. Know if you have, do you have a pen and paper nearby if you want to write that down? Every pen, time yeah. podcast when they it's it's like they don't know what to say. We go into the poop. We go into the poop jokes. That'll that'll create enough filler to get to the next topic. No, no. Well, events. Oh, well, no. Actually, our our guests just want us to ask everyone about how much they poop. It's a weird like yeah. It's thing a weird. It's a weird fetish know. that well, we need to establish. <laughs> Like, what's the average amount of times that a person is supposed to poop per day? It's Once like four a day, right? What? No, hold on. I'm Googling this. <laughs> I knew you'd do Who did I meet? There was some reseller in that once. I forget who it was. It was like, I poop like seven or eight times a day. That seems a little over the top. I think you're pooping too much. I think you're going too much if you go at the at the thrift store. Like, you should usually hold back because you got to focus. But if you got to go when you're at the thrift store, you're doing it entirely too much. Well, There's you know, a TikTok idea, Steve. I ran a study early on in my uh, YouTube career, and a lot of people, I guess a lot of resellers, poop more than three to four times. That's why I started creating ebooks and stuff. So when they're on the toilet, they can okay. go through that and Look learn. So, and know. that's why you're releasing so much short form content so that they have something to watch while they're pooping. Okay. Exactly. No, so I looked it up. It said there is no normal number of bowel movements. movements. That's, there's no normal. There's no judgment. There's no judgment. There's, yeah, here. we can't even get judged. Okay, so we're talking about events. We recently went to an event, FlipCon. Yep. Okay. How come there. you didn't go? Yeah. Why weren't you there? Um, I was busy shooting content for my mom at the thrift store. <laughs> 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 Happened to be that day. And <laughs> is the Goodwill in on it? Or are they just like, hey, Steve and his mom are coming in today, guys. Get some books ready. <laughs> Do you guys like have a boom mic and um, a couple extra <laughs> mom cameras? <laughs> yeah, people probably hates me because I talk quite a bit of trash about them because of what they've been doing over the years. So yeah, who knows? I have to sneak in and out of that place. So is it is it resellers' fault that Goodwill's prices are so high? Oh man, this is a topic we go really deep into. I think it's a combination of things, but it's probably not helping all the content resell. Yeah. Plus, it's like mainstream. It's like cool now. You see a ton of young kids there. Um, yeah, I do. I'm actually shocked. I've been going to the Goodwill and it's all like young twenties couples, like yeah, picking yeah. for thrifting and stuff. Like it's crazy. Yeah. yeah. I feel bad for like, you know, the rally roots and whatnot who are going after like the, the vintage t-shirts and, and what, yeah. because that's what the, you know, the young kids are going after yeah. all the retro yeah. stuff, you know, that stuff's popping. Well, so this is weird. And I don't know. I don't. So someone, a viewer told me this, right? She said, Hey, 
FlipCon seemed really sketchy because it looks like the goodwill was there. Their head of e-commerce sales was at the event. He was. And I was like, what? What do you mean? And she sent me his LinkedIn and a screenshot of his picture. And I remember this guy. He was there, <laughs> right? And he was – and he, here's the crazy thing is, like, during one of the panels, he interrupts because someone's like, well, I don't know how to comp it and blah, blah, blah. And he, like, interrupts like, guys, let me just tell you, from from tons of experience, just put it up, 99-cent auction. If it's good, it'll sell for a lot of money. And I'm like, dude, no. That is not That's how eBay works. That's, well, it's not if you own the – good. he runs Goodwill's eBay store. <laughs> So he's just got people coming there because they're going to Goodwill's eBay store. Well, so you have no cost advice. of goods, yeah. 99 <laughs> cents is, is a profit, technically. Maybe not after all his overhead, but. I asked Josh, Harry Tornado, about it. I said, hey, how come this guy was at your event? Because I don't, you know, I don't, no holds bars with me, okay? So I just asked, I said, Josh, what's going on? He's like, dude, I don't know. It was so weird. But he showed up to the mixer the night before and was bragging about his, like, couple million in sales a year on ebay and everyone was telling me you gotta meet this guy he sells millions on ebay a year <laughs> he goes and talks to the guy and the guy's like yeah i run goodwill's e-commerce so well, he's like so oh. you don't sell anything so he's like well and he's <laughs> like and so a lot of the, there was a couple people at the event saying hey you should let him be on one of the panels because he sells so much like some of the attendees and he's like but he's like our enemy <laughs> <laughs> so he did not add him to the panel but the guy attended the event on his own which is really wild to me like they're paying that close of attention i forget what uh i think her name is uh texas gal treasures do you know her margaret carrie probably don't. i've i've seen her youtube videos. yeah yeah she, uh we've met multiple times and whatnot but uh she has a youtube channel and she does a lot of like jewelry and different things and uh, I guess the the Goodwill, I believe it was Goodwill, they found her YouTube channel, right? And they knew that she shopped there. So the next time, and I'm kind of paraphrasing, so I might slaughter this story, but she shared it on her YouTube a couple of years ago. The next time she went into Goodwill, you know how they have those little glass faces with like all the jewelry, like the mixed jewelry in there? Uh, I think usually they were selling for like $5.99 or $6.99. Well, the next time she came in, it was like priced at like 20 or 30 bucks. And had a oh, picture, wow. It had a picture of her on the thing with oh, her YouTube wow. channel and a uh, eBay sold listing. Whoa. <laughs> That's pretty brutal. Definitely yeah. don't go there anymore. I mean, I went tonight and I found some granny panties and I'm going to be selling them online for a profit. So Whoa. pretty excited some about that. Like, some unsealed. No, they were Sears. Sears branded underpants, brand new sealed from like 1986. Uh, three bucks a pack. Seared or sealed? Sears. Oh, I thought you said sealed. Sears. Sears they were Robux. sealed. They were brand new sealed. But they were Sears, the company Sears, I right? They were smeared like they had a stain. In no, yours. well, they will be <laughs> smeared after I wear them later. <laughs> <laughs> He's got it. <laughs> That's how you get the That's extra. That's got a lot money. of layers. That is the key. That's how you make that extra couple dollars per I pair. People sell their farts in jars on eBay. It's the That's thing. That's true. And I don't even think half the time they even bother farting. That's the thing. <laughs> That's so, I mean, me. I'd respect it if they really did it, but I think sometimes they're just selling jars of air with no mm. fart. Yeah, eBay used to uh, allow all types of crazy things on their platform. You were able to sell, like, digital freaking copies of CDs and programs on it, like jock straps and, like, yeah. new socks. You sell your soul they, on eBay? Didn't well, they change the rules a lot and all that stuff? You can't sell I don't, People still do it, but I don't think they're supposed to. I, I don't think they're supposed to, but they're doing it. And this actually does, like, I'm really curious now, if you were to jar a fart, would it stay in there or would it dissipate? That's, That's a, a good question. It's got to stay in here if it's such a big market. Isn't it like a $2 billion industry or something? Yeah. I mean, you think it would because it's not going to disappear if it's stuck. We need to test this. We're going to do a science project this yeah, week. Everyone listening, let us know. It depends on the humidity. Fart. It depends on the humidity. It depends on perspiration you, and preparation. Yeah, Harry, you should create a course on it or something, man. I mean, oh, ooh, man. And sell it. Oh, oh yeah, you know man. What? Speaking I'd, of I'd that, be terrible Steve, at that. Speaking of that, I just got an email from you. I'm on your email list. <laughs> and I honestly feel like your email list is super important to you. So I want to hear a little bit about that because I know, like, you, you just released a free course, 12, yes. 12 episode free course selling on Amazon. Uh, I think that's what the, wait, what was the topic? Something like that. Anyways, and all you had to do was give your email and sign up for the email is list. That, so is tell that me to about get that. everybody into the funnel? And once they're in the funnel, then something happens, right? So that's what, that? that's what most again right now i'm really geared towards like 99 percent value i'm doing very very little selling right now the only thing i do have is a small little coaching program we help 10 people uh per month that's it just because we want to work one-on-one -on -one with people because that's how you get them results right now all the courses ebooks it's just bs nowadays yeah um, 
But the email list is important because for a couple of reasons. Number one, there's so much noise now on TikTok, Instagram. Like you can't get your message across to people. It's too busy. It's very, it's very challenging to be able to directly communicate with someone if you wanted to. So email is powerful for that. Also, if you ever do sell something down the road, maybe a coaching program or something, nobody wants to hear about it on um, TikTok, Instagram, or YouTube. So people are more, uh, I guess, open to hearing offers or different things via email. Um, yeah, so that's where a lot of the, the promotional stuff comes is via email. I get it. That makes sense. Yeah, but that was, I've I been getting so many DMs about what I'm doing because my whole business now, like I've literally scaled my business from 5K a month on Amazon to 30K a month. Um, and I buy all my items from eBay, Facebook Marketplace, and Mercari. As you know, I, I purchased, or my virtual assistants purchased a couple items from you. So, yeah, that's what it was, right? It, your course is about buying from eBay and selling on Amazon. That's right. Yes, but there's like, see, something like that would be good to create a course, but I'm not going to because I'm like done creating courses for now. But there's not really any information about that online. You can look on YouTube. You can look in the Facebook groups. Nobody really talks about it. It's interesting. Um, well, I feel like they don't talk about it because they don't want more competition, right? Like they've got – they're out there trying to find the Dave selling the DVD for 5 bucks that you can sell for 20 on Amazon, right? I don't know. Maybe. It's just – we live in a world now where there's no secrets. If you're a piece of shit or if you're doing something, like someone's going to share it. Someone's going to expose you. Like and people's like egos are too big. Like they're going to share it for likes or follows. So it's, it's just very interesting. There's not many people talking about it. Um, okay. You can look it up on YouTube. But um, yeah. Well, I guess what is what is the profit margin you'd get on a $5 DVD? Like your virtual assistant did that for you. Are they looking for a $10 profit? Like what's their, what do you tell them to uh, do? It depends. There's a lot that goes into it, but. Typically, our minimum return on investment is 40%. So um, that's like our minimum ROI. So my profit margins in that business are around 30 to 35% after all said and done. So it's actually really high compared to other online arbitrage models or wholesale. Most of the people doing traditional OA from like Nike, Lego, Adidas, you know, yeah. Art, Walmart. Okay. It really boils down to like 15%. Uh, the reason the margins are so high is because it's a lot riskier than traditional OA because you don't have that legitimate invoice. So I think a lot of people shy away from it because of that. But um, typically about a 40% ROI is the minimum that we go after. And we look at a lot of different pieces of data before we purchase. And we so go, here's, here's a something. A lot of numbers I did Yeah, you said a bunch of words sound, I didn't get. Sound, yeah, sounds, sounds fancy. It sounds good. <laughs> um, <laughs> But no, this is – okay, so I'm going to say this, and maybe – I'm sure you've thought about this. Maybe you haven't. But for me, uh, when I listen – and this is one of the things that I ended up kind of slowing down. Now, right now I watch no reseller content because I'm so busy making my own. But when mm -hmm. I was watching it, one of the things that I finally like kind of stopped watching your content uh, for was it started feeling unrelatable, right? Like I was this guy hustling stuff out of my garage, like, you know – 20 orders every four days or something and then you're talking about all these assistants and and people working for you and you know all this stuff and it starts to feel unrelatable you're like i'm never gonna get there i don't have time to get there i want to watch something else like what do you think about that do you think that hurts you or um i mean i guess I, I think it depends what your goals are um if your goal is to have like as many followers as possible and be liked by the most people and i guess please everybody in a sense. I mean, the masses, because the average reseller is like probably making like sub 5,000 a month profit and they yeah. don't have virtual assistance. They're, it's a they say 50, 50 grand like average reseller a year. Yeah, I'm just you pulling know, 40 up. to 50. I don't know what the exact, but that's just like my, my feeling right there. So I guess for yeah. everybody, you have to figure out what your goals are. Like lately, I've been loving building my business and I've been loving like creating content about more higher level stuff. The truth is like 90% of people probably aren't going to be into that. But the 10 people, 10 percent who are like really into it and really thankful. So, I mean, for years I used to create a lot of here's the funny thing. And I used to I get this comment all the time if I go to events or I go to like conferences. People are like, man, I wish you would have like grown over the years. Like you kept making like so much beginner basic information like over the years, like outside of probably the last year. And it's like at the end of the day, you're either going to do what you enjoy doing or you're going to do what everybody else enjoys. So. Yeah, no, perfect. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a balance, honestly, because as you grow, you might become less relatable, but you have to stay authentic to what you're interested in or your stuff you're communicating won't come across well to anyone. I think my game plan moving forward is honestly like I'm like really passionate about selling on Amazon now. Like I know I could keep making content about eBay like I could make it for days because I sold on eBay forever. 
but I'm just not like super passionate about eBay. I do think the average person should start on eBay. There's less rules. It's easier to source. It's yep. just you can not- sell anything. You can sell anything there. Yeah, you can sell anything. No you rules. Go to garage sale. Like 90% of the stuff at a garage sale you find is on Amazon. You're going to be restricted, gated. Like people don't want to go and get wholesale invoices and deal with yep. IP complaints and counterfeit claims and getting letters from lawyers in the mail, like at scale. Like there's all types of crazy stuff that happens. So you know, for me, I think moving forward, I'm really going to focus more on Amazon and higher level stuff. But I think in terms of like, and I hate to say lower level because it's not lower level. It's just like beginner stuff. You hear that? We're all losers. No, yeah. just kidding. A lesser <laughs> level. Professional. Lesser <laughs> professional. <laughs> I'm going to stick with like books. Like I'm going to get people in the door with books because I love books. That's what my mom does. Like that's like one of my passions is selling books and media items. So I think well, that's and cool. the, the argument could be made that the 10% that are into the super high level reselling will be more valuable um, fiscally if you did want to do a course or something like that. They're going to be willing to spend money if they're making tons of money by yeah, following I, your advice. Also, but I'm being, I, I swear over my life and some people will be like, oh, BS. Like my brain doesn't think like, how can I make money? Like, how can I like, build followers to like expose people and sell things like I, I don't know how to say this politically correct but like I've gotten to the point where like I don't have to necessarily like worry about how I'm going to make my next dollar in a sense like I've worked really hard over the last nine years so my mind is more focused on how can I do what I enjoy and how can I add value because I know if I can actually really help people um, and make a difference like I know the money will come so like I've even been spending a lot more time in my DMs one-on-ones talking to people for free like gary vaynerchuk talks about that like everybody's trying to pitch you and sell you something but like focus on actually helping people try to scale the unscalable things like you can't scale like responding to people in your dms like i'm spending like an no. hour <laughs> i don't have time so yeah i feel like that's that's you know actually one of the good things about this space the reselling space is there's not a lot of and maybe i'm naive i really feel like there's a lot of resellers and people on youtube and TikTok and Instagram that are just doing it because they're passionate and they're not necessarily trying to say, oh, how can I get a buck out of them? Because if you're on TikTok and you're kind of into content creation, you get suggested videos from other niches, right? Like makeup niches, things like that. And they're like, here's how I get a big TikTok and sell them my stuff. And it's like, we're not really, every now and then we'll sell something as a gag, like a plush or something like that. But at no point did we say, hey, let's make a YouTube to sell people our product because we're not making a product. Right, we're just we're just reselling and trying to share that, which I think is kind of cool so, about so this space. I'm curious with you guys, and feel you don't have to share anything you don't want, but like, do you guys make money at all from from your like from putting all this time into things and stuff? Yeah, I mean, I make money um, when I do the dancing. On yeah, Friday the dancing nights. videos are the hottest thing on TikTok <laughs> right now. <laughs> but honestly, no, I make money on on shorts all day on Facebook Reels, Instagram Reels, TikTok. Really? Oh yeah, dude. Facebook yeah, I make is money on the Instagram. biggest place right now. Um, so Instagram, you you've got to be monetized on Instagram, Steve. Yeah, last month. The bonuses, I, right? Well, yeah, on bonuses. Instagram, I am. I made like eight hundred fifty bucks on shorts last month, which was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, wow. I'm, people have been making a. Sh- ton of money on facebook reels i i just got approved for it and i like had to change like my tax information because my personal was in there and then they wouldn't let me like get my so i have to like wait a week but dude i've been hearing of people making like thousands off of getting like trash views on facebook reels like facebook I don't know. is huge at the moment it's it's of course not going to last forever but no. you know i think dave makes a lot more than i do on youtube but i make money on youtube i sell a ton on instagram you know whenever i I show stuff that I, you know, I pick up at thrift stores and stuff, but yeah, yeah, I I didn't start it either for that reason, but it's kind of turned into that, which is nice. I didn't sell anything for like three years. I didn't even know you can make money. Like I started it because like, honestly, I just wanted to connect with people. Once I learned about making money, like actually selling courses and stuff, like I started to kind of screw myself over because I went more towards that. And that's the biggest problem. People will start selling, 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 and then they stop doing what they're teaching. And then it's like, you're a fake. Like I got to point like where I, I, got, I gotta i gotta ask you this steve what do you do what do you do for fun i know you were doing salsa dancing and that was that was a journey but i have not seen any salsa salsa dancing content from you in a while yeah i haven't been really dancing salsa that much i mean after i left miami and whatnot i i kind of stopped but every now and then i'll put it on and do some dancing but for why me, did you leave miami yeah i missed my family to be honest like mm. I, I i really did like I was in like one of the most beautiful cities, but at the same time, it was like kind of like, I don't know, like people are just so cocky out there and arrogant and it's all about money. So it, it started to slowly turn me off in traffic. I hate being in traffic. Um, yeah. Remember, 
I'm an old man. I don't go on live shows after eight. You know, I don't like. <laughs> yeah, guys, we had to Dude, meet at freaking six thirty tonight. Three thirty, my time right now. It's <laughs> I just can't woke stay up. up till nine. I just woke up. It's insane. Yeah. I'm a little <laughs> groggy. But you could have, because I watched some amazing content from Miami. I think you could have made a full time living off dropping that. What was it? A twenty dollar bill Dude. off the balcony. Was it that those awesome? Those were so compelling. No joke. I have no idea why those were so great. But I didn't know great. we had a Raikin super fan on the show. I am a do. super fan of Raikin. <laughs> I really am. I watch his stuff religiously. It was fun. So if uh, NC Picker, I don't think, um, yeah. watched it. I, was, I didn't I, see uh, that, no. I was living in pretty much the, and I don't say this to be like cocky or arrogant, but it was like the most expensive part of Miami in oh, Brickell. Wow. Ooh, Seems pretty wow. cocky. Yeah, arrogant. that is also mm. very arrogant. Mm. Go ahead. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. The gun show. The oh boy. Show. Oh man. He's <laughs> taking his shirt off. Everyone who's listening. To compensate for the lack of hair. Let's keep going. Well, see hey, you know, I actually did notice more hair in these videos from early on. I don't know what's happening there. It was. <laughs> yeah, he's growing it, was, it out. Uh, but I was, I was on the 48th floor in Brickell, and uh, we were literally right in the heart of the city, where there's a bridge. Everyone crosses. Like, there's literally hundreds of thousands of people walking all the time. So I came up with the idea during COVID. I'm just gonna drop off dollar bills and 20s off of my off of my belt yeah yeah watch where it went and uh believe it or not if you drop a dollar bill off of the 48th floor in miami it'll stay in the air sometimes for seven eight minutes it'll travel for like a mile it was wild wow did you ever try coins or rocks or anvils uh, <laughs> a couple of times I was drunk and I was like, let me see how far I can throw this. And I'm like, I'm going to end up in jail. No. How many coyotes were injured in the filming of these videos? Oh, man. No, I, I mean, listen. So I think that uh, courses are kind of dead in our space, like paid for courses. There's so much free content available. Yeah. Obviously, we move away from that. But I think there's also this whole other thing of there's a, kind of like a, a form, like a path for a reseller. And the path starts off with the content creators like yourself. Uh, the the content creator for beginners, which a lot of your stuff is like, like you said, it's helping people figure out how to get started, right? And then as they get started, they learn kind of the basics, say they, they do that, and then they try to find some content that's just more like entertainment value, mm -hmm. right? Because they feel like they've learned enough, they're making money on their side hustle, and they may want to just be entertained in the same like uh, niche. And so I think there's like multiple content creators as well, which is also part of it. So someone will come in, they'll watch Steve, and then they'll like get jaded and they'll watch me. <laughs> and then they'll be like, oh, maybe I should be better. And they'll, they'll go watch Steve again. <laughs> directly after that. They're like, this is a waste of time. He ain't making any money. But anyways, my point is I think there's like a space for both. And I think the cool thing about the beginner content is it's more evergreen. Yeah. Right. The stuff that you've made in the past, people watch four years later because it's like, how do I start selling toys? Right. How do I start doing that? Like me, it's like, yeah, I got a Vero today. I suck at reselling. <laughs> like no one's watching that three days later. It's no. being watched. Nobody's in one watching day and that then no the one day you back. posted either, man. Like my stuff has no evergreen value when it comes to my channel. It's crazy. But people, they feel like they know you more like they're it's a deeper relationship with what you do, though. Like it might not have. I don't know. I'm just going based on what you said. It might not have longevity the content man but i see how many likes and followers and co like comments you're getting on the video like people are really loving it man so. well me and carrie talk about that there is like a more of a relationship carrie you talk yeah. about this with your stories all the time right yeah the stories like on instagram stories are for like the hardcore people who really enjoy what you're doing and you could that's a place where i can goof off i can like as you made fun of me i sing on my uh stories i'll <laughs> i'll do whatever <laughs> i want i'll talk about yeah. you know whatever's interesting to me i'll talk about you know how Elvis was obviously a superior movie to Top Gun Maverick, false. which was so false. just so utter false. garbage. Dude, it's utter now garbage. the 12th highest gross grossing movie ever. Top Avatar. Gun Maverick is. Isn't Avatar... Is number one. Yeah, number and that one, is yeah. a pile of garbage. So no, it was good. Dude, it has it 3D. 3D. Have you ever seen 3D? Was, <laughs> yeah, since I was a child, it's not that big of a deal. No, okay, listen. I think... Okay, so Steve, that is something, and I don't know if you feel like you have that, but there is something to, like that hardcore audience that just wants a personal relationship with you, yeah. which I think something like a podcast provides. I think something like my Flipper channel provides where I'm just chatting as I pull orders. Carrie stories provide it. Like, where do you feel like your outlet is for that kind of content? Yeah. Like, people want to really get to know Steve and not just learn something. Like, they just want to get to know you. Yeah. I, I don't think I've really had one over the last couple of years. Honestly, I kind of closed it off a little bit just because 
I felt like my personal and business were kind of blending in too much. Yeah. And at times it became really stressful. Lately, I did uh, start a, a Facebook group where you oh, know, okay. posting some more stuff in there and just engaging and answering questions. I think for me, I don't know. I mean, I was going to say Instagram DMs, but they're not going to get to know me intimately. That's just how you're able to connect with me. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't know. I don't. That's probably something I need to figure out. I do live from time to time, but I, I keep them, you know, business professionals. So I don't know. I, I might have to figure something out, you know, even if it's just once a month or something, you know. I think there's something to it. Like, okay, so here's a good example. There's someone named Shed Flips on YouTube, Lonnie. I don't know if you've seen him, but yeah, yeah. he has his Never Shed Flips channel. Him. And it's very similar to my channel or Kevin's channel where we just chat with the viewers, talk about, because honestly, it's an outlet like reselling is lonely. So it's like your way to talk to your friends, the other resellers, and then they comment and it's like a relationship, right? Like you get to hang out with your buddies while you're pulling your orders. And what's crazy is most of the time on YouTube, if you take like a three month month break, you break your channel, right? Like you, I'm sure you've been studying YouTube long enough. You know this, like you can't take a three month break from content creation without having some negative impact. When Lonnie has taken three month breaks, he'll he'll take off the whole summer. He'll come back, seven thousand views, first video, and then every video after because they have this personal relationship with Lonnie, and they're coming back because they want to know oh, where have you been for the last three months? Oh, cool, you're back to pulling orders. I'm watching every day again. Like <laughs> there's something so valuable about a channel like that, even if it doesn't get evergreen views. It's just so cool to have like this family that's just waiting for you to come home. Yeah. And that is like, I, if you can find a way to do it, I think it, it humanizes you. It, it builds the the relationship with your brand, with the with the viewers, things like that in a really cool way. Yeah, I yeah. really don't know. And I, I mean, I've literally been watching. I'm a super fan. I don't even know if I know that much about you, Steve, outside of the that you're, you know, always business, business, business. And it's it's respectable. And but yeah, I knew I knew you salsa danced. I have no idea if you like Creed or Nickelback or both. I'm you know what's you know what's you know what's funny when I meet people in real life, they're like, "You're so serious! Like all you talk about is business." But if you were to actually know me in real life, like I'm the biggest goofball, like joking all the time, like everything is like actually when it's like real life, like I don't really talk about business that that much. It's funny, but um, speaking of music, like one one fun little fact is I've always been like really big into uh, hip hop and battle rap. I, I love like listening. Hmm battle raps on uh have you ever watched those videos or like freestyles you ever heard of a guy named like harry mack i watch harry mack all the time oh, on tiktok yeah. yeah he's good my girlfriend and i we yeah. went to his uh little i guess it's like an event or a concert and he comes out and he freestyles and you throw words to him and yeah. we went he's out very talented <laughs> it is like the most amazing thing and yeah. matter of fact, right before this call i was actually pretty sad because one of my favorite battle rappers his name's uh pat stay um, mm. he's a Canadian battle rapper, like one of the best underground people wouldn't know who he is. And, uh, he got stabbed to death, murdered. Oh my gosh. Oh, wow. and I was like, the battle went too far. I don't know. And it was just crazy. Cause he was so funny and whatnot, but yeah, it's just one little odd thing I'm into. It's, it's not like I'm a rapper or anything like that, but it's like, that's one weird thing that I'm into. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that's, that's interesting. So what? when do you think you'll be doing your first battle rap on yeah. your channel? Like, could we do one now? Let's yeah, do let's one do now. A battle Carrie rap. versus you. I'm ready. Okay. Yeah. All right. You've got to in integrate the word Spider-Man. Carrie, you go first. Wait, I'll drop a beat. Wait, I got to go first. Come on. I'm not even a battle rapper. Okay. Uh, I, I guess I'm... I, hey, I'm the man. Look at me, Spider-Man, flowing through the the screen uh, uh, like a, uh, 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 a man yeah <laughs> see i suck at that i'm not i'm not into it like raken let's see what raken all right here's my bad beat for you raken ready yeah. Yeah. Raken profit. Keep, going. <laughs> keep going keep going keep going keep going he's just gonna go yeah yeah <laughs> yeah Rick uh, and profit. Yeah. Uh, yeah 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 more money more problems no money no problem okay you do the beat i can't beat bucks go acapella all right let me go oh yeah ahead. do it acapella yeah good that's called again uh, trash cash. 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 When it comes to battle rap, you don't want to battle me. You better just pass. Because I don't think you got anything in your bank account. Ooh, Everything you got is trash. That's fair. How are you going to try to come against Rake and Profit with a rap? Whoa. Oh. Let me pull oh. off my back. Oh. It's got a bag. That in my backpack, it might make you laugh. It's my YouTube plaque. <laughs> 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 He's I knew it carried it in a backpack. I knew it. <laughs> I saw your podcast before, and I'm like, I put it in my backpack. <laughs> well, 
Well done. <laughs> well played. You figured out the key to the podcast. Don't take yourself too seriously. I love it. Dude, okay, so how much will you sell me that for? Because I'm interested. I'm a buyer. <laughs> I want to get my banner, but I want it to be yours. Is it real <laughs> silver? That's what I want to know. I, I have no idea what it's really worth, but I was looking on eBay like a, a year ago, and people are selling them for like a grand. Dude, see, I, do every, I think every like content creator that's a reseller is like, all right, so if I ever get a plaque, how much can I sell it for? <laughs> yeah, dude, that's cool, man. Congrats on that. Um, that now well I'm all done, jealous. Man. I don't even know what to do. No, yeah. that was pretty cool, man. <laughs> Raken went all in. You got to respect that. He went all in. He didn't care. I love it. Uh, you got to okay. be prepared, man, when you get in the trashed cash. Yeah. I actually, I kind of want to see like the the battle rap between Raken and and Daily Refinement. Like, I feel oh, like that's the real battle. Does he rap? <laughs> he should. He's you just, know you know, he should. You know, it's crazy. I wouldn't want to do it because I'd probably get my <laughs> kicked by a twelve year old. But you guys watch like the YouTube boxing because I am obsessed with it. Speaking of what yeah. I'm I am obsessed with the whole Jake Paul fighting KS. Oh, <laughs> that thing. Yeah, yeah. no, I've yeah. never watched it, but I've heard and of it. When I'm not working, like I'll be watching videos to see who's fighting next. Like I am obsessed with it. Don't ask me why. I don't want to fight anybody. No, but I think you want to fight. I think we should yeah, do I this. Think you Let's do. set this Literally. up. Oh, no. Who should we punch fight with Rake and Profit? Right, we <laughs> Comment below. Of... Who do you want to see fight Rake and Profit in a real MMA match? See, if niche? he fought Daily yeah. Refinement, he is tall. Daily Refinement's no. like 6'8". Yeah. Yeah. So... yeah. He's a big dude. I met him in real life. I would not want to go against him. He's, yeah, he's actually huge. really tall. Yeah. We also met him, just saying. Yeah, we've also met him. We met him. Um, and we I fell him. asleep during his intro. <laughs> <laughs> it was really long. Well, they gave us like this get five minutes to introduce yourself. He talked for like two hours about all his employees and stuff. And yeah. I'm just like, <sighs> it literally was, I think, about a half an hour. And it was interesting, but wait, it too was long. interesting, but I've got ADD. So, can I ask you guys a, a crazy question? Who was your favorite speech and who. No, I won't, I won't go there. I just want to. No, and who sucked? Yeah, no, we're, yeah, we're all sucked? for we're it. All okay, for that. cool. Yeah. All right, favorite, uh, probably my favorite was... It was me, honestly. I was my own favorite. I really liked what I had to say. <laughs> I do. I he, thought it was he, good. He was pretty good, yeah. I don't, dude, I, I hate panels, so I was, like, pretty, pretty miserable the whole time. Really? But if I had to pick the one that, like, put me to sleep the least, and this isn't their fault, it's just my ADHD. Like, I just can't focus. Uh, Joey Bada Bing kept me awake. Yeah. So yeah, there you go. And then uh, as far as put me to sleep the most, it was probably Taylor Refinement's intro. No, I mean that was that was boring. <laughs> no um, one was like over the top bad like stage. I mean, there was people who were stage fright who don't do public speaking and you could tell. That's hard. But but there was like definitely some people who just didn't really engage me as well like that I just kind of Got a little Harry, like Harry I tornado. got. Okay, so Harry no, tornado this, was terrible. They were nice, Hands down. but um, Renzi, <laughs> Renzi, is that the name? The yeah, couple. Renzi now, yeah, Renzi. I think. I the only reason I wasn't really into their thing is because it was like just so, like, unrelatable. And I struggle with unrelatableness. But like they're selling like a kajillion dollars in shoes and not using mm -hmm. eBay at all. And I'm just, and they go to bed at six p.m. They yeah. were bragging about that. I mean, what kind of person goes some, to bed that early? Some rake and um, profit garbage right there. <laughs> and I don't know. I just was like, wow, that's all. Like, and they're super fit and healthy. I'm just yeah. not into any of that crap. They really just made me feel like a bad person. So I hate them for it. Well, I will say, um, <laughs> wow. they're better was at great, humaning. honestly. But I will say, I think it was hustling hooks. It was a dean. He said something about how, like, if you have, it wasn't his, his talk overall. I really enjoyed, but he talked a lot. I think he mentioned something about how social media doesn't really matter unless you're somehow capitalizing on it, basically making money off of it. And I'm sure that's not exactly how he meant it, but I came just off thought that I, way, yeah. Yeah, it kind of came off that way. And I don't I don't agree with that at all, honestly. I mean, of course you can make money with a social media following, but there's so many other, I, I feel like perks to, to being Networking. on social media, like meeting people. I didn't realize yeah. how many cool people there were out there that did similar stuff to me. Um, so yeah, I didn't really agree with that or jive with that, but. Overall, he was his stuff. I learned a lot from what he said because he's a really good reseller. Yeah, and, and I tell people all the time too, like start your YouTube channel just to network because you can get into circles, groups, yeah. pick people's brains. Like the other day, I was freaking and speaking of unrelatable, NC Pick would be like, ah, oh, this doesn't. <laughs> Dude, oh. listen, I tell you that so you can know kind of some of the challenges your channel's facing but, right now. Like that's no, just reality. I was well, I was talking to a uh, a forty million dollar Amazon seller. He's done forty million dollars over the last year. And did he run the goodwill? <laughs> yeah. he ran it into the ground it's actually jeff bezos brother yeah yeah gotcha uh, 
But uh, I would have never had the opportunity to talk to him and pick his brain, even though, again, it's a bit out, out of my league, not even close. I'm nowhere near that. But, you know, when you have a YouTube channel, you can get into circles and talk to people that normally it would be you'd have to pay them or they wouldn't want to talk to you. So just network, meeting people like like I, back to me saying before I was a complete idiot. It's so true. Like I've learned so much about Amazon from all the people I've been able to meet, mentors and just friends and a lot of my friends I've met off of YouTube. So. Yeah, no, I think we have too. I, I mean, I just had someone message me. He was asking me about some Cabbage Patch kids he found. I'm like, oh, I know a friend from YouTube that does exclusively Cabbage Patch. I was able to connect them. She yeah. gave him all the answers. Like, there's such a cool sense of community in that regard. Yeah. Uh, and if you have a channel, it's easier to connect, right? Like, you're not just, um, <clears throat> you know, messaging privately and they're not seeing it, right? Like, on Instagram, it has to get approved. And I have, like, 30 that I still haven't approved just because I'm busy. Uh, but if you have a channel, they might already be following you, and so you can easily connect with those people. So there's some value to that for sure. Yeah, I mean, uh, when was it? Speaking of my mom, I know Carrie and NC, you guys are going to love this one. This was, what was it, 2020, into 2020. I had a guy who hit me up on Instagram and said, I watch your content, I like your content, I run a clean-out company. So I guess what he does is he goes and he cleans out like the uh, estates and whatnot. And they sell this stuff, but most of the stuff they end up junking that doesn't have any value. And they had, I think it was like 5,000 books or something like that. I said, hey, do you want them for free? We're just going to trash them. I know you sell books. And I said, absolutely. So uh, we picked them all up and I ended up bringing them back home, dropped them off in the storage bin and gave it to my mom and said, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you put them back in the Goodwill and made your mom go buy them. <laughs> we got to film this. But allow, allowing me to shoot content so I could post short form content and build my following. Is she, <laughs> is she earning money? Carrie asked and you didn't answer. Are you giving her some like vague off the Instagram reels? Is she getting reels? a cut of this? <laughs> oh, no. She gets absolutely nothing. Good, good. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, you know what's funny is That's in fair. my picker videos, like my because I have two channels. I have NC Picker. I have NC Flipper. And well, I also have Trash to Cash and I have a cooking channel and I have a building channel. But on my picker channel, I actually have my mom in it, and people love it all the time. She's sixty six, and she's not making three thousand a month, but people do relate to her a lot because uh, she's super friendly, she's fun. Like people love it when she's in my videos, and they get upset when she's not. Yeah. And one of the comments I got, I've gotten like ten times. Carrie, I haven't even told you this: is your mom has great legs. <laughs> so I don't know. Do, do people ever compliment your mom's legs? <laughs> Is that we're, a thing? We're more about the booty. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> 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 my mom, things you don't know. Wow. No, um, but no, I take care of my mom. You know, I pay a couple of her bills. Um, if I ever find some crazy hauls, like just yesterday, we went out to Trader Joe's, and when I dropped her off at the house, I'm like, I got a surprise for you. Uh, my buddy had a bunch of textbooks. His uh, sister didn't want them. They were they were moving out. So I took them all. It was like three, four hundred bucks in profit. Just gave it to her. So that's that's the nice thing about it. You know, we help each other out and whatnot. So Where in Connecticut do you live? Over in the Hartford area. Oh, OK, OK. I grew up on the shoreline uh, near New Haven. Oh, OK. Yeah. But an hour away. That's pretty cool. Area. Yeah. Yeah. OK. So so your mom is selling books like for real or it's just for show? No, she's for real. She makes around one to two thousand a month profit off of it, anywhere from yeah. three to five thousand a month in sales. So yeah. you know, sometimes it drops down to you know twenty five hundred a month in sales. Other times, it's if she's you know going crazy. She's I think had months over five, close to six. So I feel like a lot of eBay resellers, a lot of them have given up on books. Like they just walk past them at garage sales, thrift stores. It's hard it's, now. Way hard. I think like. Uh, I mean, it just feels like it's so much time for so little ROI whenever I look at books for eBay. Mind you, I'm not looking for Amazon. Is it? Are they worth a lot more on Amazon? Is that what I'm missing out on? Well, I mean, that's my whole business model is built on that, eBay to Amazon. So uh, yeah. depending on what it is, there is usually at least a 20 to 30% bump from, from eBay to Amazon. Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean, you got to find the right books. A lot of people get in trouble in their book business because they're buying stuff that's super slow selling, selling for 12 bucks where they make $2 profit. Can't really build a business like that. You got to find the books that are selling for 20, 30, 40 and make your money off the, the textbooks essentially. But um, one of oh, the, the textbooks, interesting. Yeah, but most people aren't going to be able to sell them because there's a lot of new restrictions and gated categories and textbooks are tough to sell if you have a new account now. My mom is actually grandfather. She's in like, the five percent club of like textbooks that people mostly can't sell so that definitely is a leg up and advantage that she has over the competition 
people will pass on the books that she's able to buy because they can't sell them. So. Well, I in 2014, I was buying textbooks to trade into Amazon because they would give you like a hundred bucks trade in credit. Did you ever do you ever mess with that guys or no? Was that uh, the only one? Not any. They don't really have traded that. stuff in before back in the day. Yeah, so. I did yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and there was, I mean, yeah, textbooks were always good and. I don't know, like, there's a YouTuber, Katie Reads. She's always, like, buying books to resell, and it's, like, I don't even know how she finds this stuff. Like, I don't even know how she knows. She she picks up books, and they're, like, a $100 book. I'm, like, how? Do you, I know, never about, find anything. Do you know her about her boyfriend? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dante. Oh, God, I have been hooked on the freaking, uh, the freaking. 60, 60 days in? Days. Oh, man. <laughs> I, I Dude, you should go to, why don't you go to his event? He's doing an event in October. You should go. It's in uh, South Carolina. Really? I yeah. Not, yeah, I have to look into it. Yeah, it's the Prison to Profit Convention. And, uh, you know, it's a reseller rally. But, like, we went I've last year and it was... So what's go. that? I've been to jail. I'll go. Dude, that'd be actually kind of sick. But, yeah, no, like, he's... Uh, I, I think all these reseller events are really fun, right? Like, I, a lot of people commented on my FlipCon video saying seems like a waste of time. And I honestly think anyone who says that just doesn't understand the value of networking. Like, it's so valuable to meet other people in your space who can give you advice, who can become, like, long-term friends. Like, that, you can't put yeah. a price on that. That's, I just, that's the thing. I just hosted an event. I've been hosting an event. It's free. It's called the Connecticut Thrifting Meetup. I heard about it. Someone yeah, there told me they went it, to yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, KT Treasures was out there. Yeah. 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 They said they were there, and they were talking to you about coming on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Did they enjoy it? <laughs> they did enjoy it. Yeah, they enjoyed it. And they said they really want you on the show. So they're going to be, hello. <laughs> we did it. We made it. We did it. <laughs> we made it. You know what's amazing? I don't know their age. Um, I know they're a bit older than I am, but their energy is contagious. They oh, are I know. Hustlers. <laughs> they talk shit too. I loved it. Like uh, I was I was at the Connecticut Thrifting Meetup. Me and Vinny were there talking, and uh, we were drinking a little bit under the influence, a little bit at the bar. And... Uh, she was talking to Vinny and Vinny was like, so what do you do? And I don't know. She's like, we do the, you know, the, um, what is it called? The, the locker. The thong song. The thong song locker purchases. Is the best dance. Song yeah. Oh, storage, storage locker. Yeah. Storage lockers. And they're like, you cannot like, we'll out hustle you at all, all day. Right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Were they wearing like, they wear like matching outfits too, yeah, like they... matching hats and stuff like that. Yeah. They're fun. They're very fun. I've met them at it. They we went to the prison. We should have done that day, by the way, matching yeah. outfits. Yeah. No, we should. And so, yeah, you should. Honestly, that would be cool. You should go to that. I'm still like up in the air about it. But yeah. still, there's a lot of cool resellers that go to it. Dante's a really great guy. His girlfriend is awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, cool okay. event. I might go. I haven't decided yet because I'm going I'm going to Amsterdam in two days and I've been traveling a ton. So crazy. Do you crazy. smoke weed? No, I don't smoke weed. <laughs> Me and Carrie both yeah. are like straight edge for life. Yep, we're straight um, in. Kevin, yeah. Kevin's probably smoking Kevin, weed every yeah, day. No, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> he's out in the middle of nowhere in Virginia. He's probably uh, smoking yeah. right as we speak. I can't, I can't smoke anymore. Um, it's funny. Like Probably like seven or eight years ago, every time I would smoke, I would have massive panic attacks. So that happens to a lot of my friends. Yeah, I know. I mean, I've, I've heard of people who smoke drugs, and they often yeah. tell me that, <laughs> that they get anxiety from smoking the drugs. Exactly. The drugs, when they're smoked... <laughs> They get all icky You go feeling. all crazy. <laughs> We're 12. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's talk about your event. What does your event look like in Connecticut? Like, what would it be if I went to it? Do you give, like, massages? Like, what's – how does it work? Are you taking uh, stuff out of people's hands, saying that's mine, I was massages. there first? Uh, yeah, we, you know, we give massages. We, uh, we sell courses. <laughs> Timeshare. No, really. Like, what, what is it like? What is yes, it like? It's actually really fun. So – there's a couple parts to it. We meet in the morning, usually around 9 a.m., and we thrift until about 3 or 4 uh, in the afternoon. This time, it was really exciting because I actually um, put together a private pick with one of my uh, connections who runs a uh, clean-out company. So he has a huge barn that's about 14,000 square feet. So I introduced my connect to everybody and allowed them to – they picked from this guy's uh, oh, barn. Wow. So it was fun. We hit cool. a bunch of stores. We did a private pick. A lot of people scored some pretty crazy things, and uh, then we actually have a hotel. So I book a hotel for everybody. Everyone has to pay on their own, but uh, there's a hot tub, spa, everything there. So we stay at the hotel. Sauna. And, uh, we go out to dinner together, and then we come back to the hotel. We drink. There's ping pong, pool, network. So it's it's just really laid back. I find <laughs> – I mean, Gary, like, okay, so they're getting drunk. They're going back to the hotel. That's What's happening the massage next? part, right? That's when that happens? <laughs> 
exactly. And we have a, um, it's like a singles event, so everybody who's single. <laughs> so is we, this like a, a swingers I thrifting thing? I don't know why. I just or? like randomly started <laughs> laughing again about his backpack with his play button in it. <laughs> I have so great brand explosions, and uh, oh, what we God. do is. It's all safe sex. It's fun. It's great. It's a great time. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, okay. So the events themselves, are you charging for entry? Is there like, you know, you pay. <laughs> are you no. charging for entry? In a non innuendo fashion, is there like, so FlipCon costs 300 bucks. Uh, the prison's profit thing is like 100 bucks. Like, is there a cost to go to the event? Well, you just have to pay for your own hotel room. and. Okay. Buy so it's food. free. You're, you're doing it for free, yeah, basically. Yeah. Just pitching or selling anything. For me, it's. You know, it's funny, back to, and I didn't even think of this, like how do you people get to know you and stuff? It's probably those events. Usually we do a couple per yep. year. So I just hadn't done one for a couple of years because of, you know what, all the, the crazy. Yeah, yeah. And but, have uh, you ever considered taking one out of Connecticut? Like uh, somewhere more central? I, like I have, Island maybe? Who knows? I, I've actually considered it. But again, over the last couple of years with all the craziness going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. But well, I, I, I yeah. can for sure we actually did one in massachusetts and then like five oh, okay. people showed up so i was like okay i'm not that cool <laughs> <laughs> well we did so me and carrie did one in vegas right for the trash to cash but kevin couldn't come yeah and so like we had like 18 people and then <laughs> and then kevin comes to the next one we have 100 people so yeah, we know kevin, where we stand <laughs> kevin is the draw he gets the people and the walkers out to the yeah. show the the nursing homes actually bust people in so <laughs> that's kind of nice <laughs> you know what it, it's actually true you have to be strategic if you host an event like like the hor horny the, the horny tornado Harry tornado horny tornado that's a new one <laughs> <laughs> I didn't tell you guys what was in, I didn't tell you guys only fan page comes. right there. So the reason everyone comes is because Horny Tornado comes to the end. I'm never not calling him Horny Tornado ever again. <laughs> I'm only calling him that. Only. Because I get it. I get it. I get what Rakens feel. I get it. Oh god. Oh boy. Okay. okay. Sorry, Josh. Sorry. <laughs> Josh, if you get the right people to come, then people will show up. Well, and yeah, that's, I mean, that is a thing. I mean, I thought, I love the events in a sense, and then there's also a part I kind of hate about them. I love them because, like, I get to meet so many cool people, cool people, but I also hate them because I have to meet so many cool people and I get stressed out about meeting all these people. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's just, it, it's a lot. It's a lot, but it's cool. We want to do another one. I, I think we'll probably do one in Florida at some point, but I don't know when. You know, because that's where I live, and I don't want to travel anymore. You guys want to make it as convenient for you as possible. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Vegas, you know, Florida, they're right next to each other. You'll be that's fine. That's true. That's true. <laughs> you need to come. Carrie got to experience Florida humidity for the first time. I Steve. had no idea. <laughs> no idea. I'm in the Vegas heat, but it, like, bounces off of you. In in uh, freaking Florida, it sticks to you, and there's freaking alligators on meth everywhere swamp butt and carrie yeah. learned about a swamp butt that was his first experience with it yeah exactly exactly yeah. i was like do i have to change every 15 minutes is that yes. normal yes you do and you shower you walk outside you instantly have to shower again that's just the way it works that's just the florida living and, and that's probably one of the reasons steve left honestly pretty much did you ever go down to the keys uh yeah i did it was beautiful yeah i I've really never been i want to go sometime i went to uh to Miami several times and there's a lot of doppelgangers of mine down there like because my mom is like half Cuban or whatever I don't I yeah. never get it right so like it actually like I see my brother there's me there's you know my sister it's kind of cool I feel like yeah. if you go down there like um it'd change your life man it's just got such a vibe there I'd start getting into the the sandwiches which I do the sandwiches are, are delicious yeah <laughs> I love it and then yeah it's oh, just it's amazing awesome. I just I feel like I was in the Golden Girls, which would be perfect for me. Is that where they were? They they were in yeah, Miami. They were in Miami, man. You didn't nice. know that? The I've Golden never Girls watched the show. Is we're it about the most Miami thing in the eighties, more okay. so than the Vice. Yeah, see, that's that's why I stick with eBay. Honestly, is like my love for the eighties and the nineties retro stuff, and I feel like you can't really move that stuff on Amazon. You know, and books to me are just boring. It's a, like, filled with words and have no purpose. Hard words I can't read. But I think that's so beautiful as well, like not to be corny, but it's like you're doing something you enjoy. You're doing something you love. Like, you know, you're in the one percent club that like the, the, the general population hates what they do. So it's not all about money. Yeah. Right. You don't want to be broke. You don't want to be struggling because that sucks. But if you're able to make a living, you know, you have a place to live, take care of your family and enjoy yourself. I mean, it's 
it's not all about money at all. Like life's too short. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's going to die one day. Do what you enjoy. Well, and that's the cool thing about reselling is everyone has their own thing they love. Like Carrie loves sports cards, right? The yeah. wax junk that you throw away that I throw away. He goes and digs it out it. of the trash can. Yeah, like, really? He loves yeah. it. Like he'll look I'll through $1 cards. I'll just stay in the dumpster cards. all day just going through those cards. What do you enjoy I mean, the most? Uh, d- with sports cards, I just – Honestly, there's like so many little nuances. The smell of a sports card. I mean, there is that mm-hmm. wax smell on the memories. I mean, I've been collecting since 1990. So I see a certain pattern or a certain player and it reminds me not so much of when they played sports, but my memories I had when I collected them. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love the hunt. It's like the ultimate pick for me because uh, I have a super defined knowledge on certain things and I can find things that other people can't just because I'm still kind of obsessed with it you know I mean in a, in a sense so it's like needle in the haystack with that Nick. yeah it, like it is for every 500 that. crap cards you probably find one good card I yeah mean, in some that... in some boxes that's how it is some are great yeah. but some boxes and I take pride in that and it's probably not the best use of my time at, at times but you know what I'm doing well enough to survive I can take an hour out and go through a box and find a couple sure. of gems so are you doing that to collect because you want to be able to like hold on to that memory and like store it in your room or in your house? Are you like, are you getting a high off of actually finding it and then like enjoying oh, it? it. it. <laughs> it's about, I, I sell every single card I find, but I get the joy of kind of collecting through the search. And then I will sell stuff that probably isn't the smartest thing to sell. Like I'll be excited. And Dave knows this. If I find a card worth like five bucks that I got for a quarter. I'll get excited about that just as much as, you know, if I find a, a video game or, you know, a Nintendo DS like I did this weekend, garage selling. I'll so, get just as excited. I don't know why. I just, I dig it. So you sell them on eBay? Yeah, I sell a ton of cards on eBay, yeah. You ever get any scripts? Like, people will send me a message like, hey, make sure the corners aren't dented. Like, make sure it's in perfect <laughs> I Yeah. <laughs> You're I, profit. I got, I got that today, yeah. I got that from somebody. It was, it was a lot, you know, better done than your message. I felt like it was a little bit more sincere. Well, okay, that was a whole thing, all right? So <laughs> Steve quiet. makes this video, okay? So I make a video saying Steve's message. I was not upset at all. I was like, yeah, it's well, kind, of a, kind of a net. <laughs> What's that? No, I wasn't upset at all. I was like, kind of, I was like, oh, this would be an interesting topic because I know it drives resellers like ebay sellers go nuts when they get those messages and i was like yeah it's kind of irritating but it doesn't really bother me but i'm going to talk about it because it's an interesting topic right and so any someone told you about it i don't know who who narked me out but someone told you i kept mentioning your name and i'm like what is this so i hunted it down and i was like yeah so he watches it and he makes like a response which was like you know you read your message and then a lot of the responses in the comments people are like oh that message is so douchey blah 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 and then he made another response to the response saying that ebay sellers are entitled pieces of crap at least that's what i heard what do you what do you go ahead what do you think (laughs) um so so your question is like what what do i think like do i think that ebay sellers are (laughs) titled i'm just setting you up no i watched the video basically what you were saying was customer service should be first and people shouldn't get upset if a customer asks them to do something in a specific way that's basically your opinion Yeah, I mean, but at the same time, I'm a very blunt person with things like that. So I know, like, I know my blind spots. I've been told like too many times. So I did clean it up a little bit, but it's still probably extremely, I'll use your favorite word, obnoxious. It's still obnoxious. Dude, that was a great word. I told Kevin I was using that word. He's like, can I use it in a title? I was like, I don't care. You really like that word. <laughs> Start a YouTube channel with like the obnoxious picker. Obnoxious picker. I like it. I like it. No, I mean, listen, I, I totally get both sides. Uh, it doesn't actually bother me that much. But like I said, I thought it was an interesting topic. I thought it was worded in a way that was worth reading. <laughs> but yeah. hey, you know what? There's no such thing as bad press. So both of us got press. <laughs> I tried to actually, I cleaned it up. Like I said, like, please and thank you a couple more. Like I tried to figure out a way because... I mean, honestly, like you can I don't know, I'll show you like I'm getting so much stuff sent to me. You probably can't see, but like I'm cleaning my garage now because my garage is a hole. So I'm going to start moving everything in there. But like we're we're buying like 50, 60, 50 to 60 items a day. So like every single day, there's like 40 to 80 items showing up at my front door. And it's like, wow, there's just so many items that like the stuff they're sending. It's like they're just like completely like shipping horribly. Like and it's like 5%. So it's like 95 percent are good. Right. I'm not. Trying yeah. To- yeah. Back. But it's the, the exception that drives you nuts, right? Those 5%, yeah, it's, it's, it's like, like, oh, crap. It's annoying to have to go yeah. through the whole refund process. And honestly, if I make the mistake, I'll keep it. I really will. Like, if I don't see it in the picture and there's a flaw and, like, we miss it, like, I won't go and, like, be a d- 
and like try to refund it. I really won't. Um, or like the other day, my girlfriend was opening up packages. She slit the box accidentally and ripped it. I'm eating. Yeah, that happens. Yeah. yeah. That happens. Be like, I could easily be like, oh, it was the eBay seller's fault. And like you guys and myself as an eBay seller, you can't do anything. You're screwed. It stinks. But- yeah. To the, I gave up at this point. Like with eBay returns, I've given up. I put on a hundred percent refund, instant return. Like I don't even try to fight anymore. Like if you buy something from me and want to screw me over and return it, go ahead. eBay will refund you. They'll send you a label. I just, it's not worth it. eBay will never side with the seller. So I don't even yep, try never. anymore. Yeah. <laughs> just let it happen. <laughs> what is what does your post office person think about 40, 50, 60 boxes being delivered to your house every day? <laughs> no. I, I actually, um, had a conversation with him about it. and yeah. uh, It's just Beanie Babies. Don't I worry about it. And I, he knows what I do because I told him, like, I've given him gift cards because I'm like, I'm – and he's actually told me, he's like, I'm actually really grateful of this opportunity. And I was like, what? Like, I'm like, maybe he's being polite. He's like, well, the way it works – is we have to deliver a certain amount of packages per a time frame. So I'm able to hit my quota easily because by coming to you, I drop off all these things. So it like saves an hour on his. Wow. Yeah. So like, he's actually like, he's so funny. He's an Indian guy. He's like a cute, funny guy. And he like comes out, he's always smiling, bringing all the packages. And I'm do, like, you, do you set up pickups for him too? Or you don't do any pickups with him? No, because uh, I ship everything th- through UPS. So I schedule okay. pickups through UPS. But it's all like you. mostly media items so everything's usually coming through like usps okay so before we run out of time i know you have a thing going on soon so let's try to finish in like two more minutes but you have virtual assistants how many do you have uh like with amazon yeah with just like your your amazon business how many people are out there buying things for you and things like that yeah so i have four virtual assistants right now with the amazon business two are full-time sourcers so they're literally on ebay 40 hours a week each so that's like 80 hours uh, wow between the two uh, shopping on ebay that's kind of a fun job well, with steve rakin's credit card <laughs> they're, yeah they're actually not even shopping too much on ebay anymore i mean they buy everything on ebay but we have a list of like over like three thousand items we purchased and sold so they just go and replenish the inventory essentially and we have like some softwares to do reverse sources and we use like tactical arbitrage and different things but um and where, then are they, I, where are they based your vas all in the philippines so philippines okay yeah, um yeah two source one reprices and deals with some other like list they list for me as well and then uh one of them deals with like all stranded inventory and fixing listings and pricing do you have to put like an amazon label on every dvd that you get in no uh well you have to put what's known as an fn SKU. it's a little barcode that you put over the barcode which allows right. amazon to track it so you have to but you do that personally that's all i do i don't i don't list or choose the pricing or any of that i have someone on my team who does all of that um, we have like a system where I take a picture of everything and then they list it all for me. So it saves me like 80% time. And then um, I just come in at the end, double check everything. It takes like five minutes per box and like 30 to 40 items go in a box. And then I have to just print the labels out, label everything, put it in the box and ship it out. So, All right, guys. So if you want to learn how to make 30 grand a month putting stickers on boxes, <laughs> follow Steve from Rake and Profit. He's on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, everywhere else. Thank you for coming on the show. Uh, see you next guy next week, guys. Horny tornado. <laughs>